Okay, so um, I'm going to go over the test. This is the Tuesday class. Um, you know, if you're the Thursday class, you can look if you like. Okay. Um, so the first one had this uh, ball going up a ramp, and I'm going to call that the x direction. And I gave the acceleration, uh, so it's going to go up and it's going to slow down. And there's two balls. So one of them starts with the higher initial speed, and then a little bit later, one with the lower initial speed. And the first thing was to make a sketch. And I've already put the answer over here, just to save time. OK, so the first one, it's just going to look like this. It's just a parabola. This is, the, this is time, and this is x. OK, that, you did something just like that before. Now the second one starts a little bit later. And what's going, to, it's, what's going to be different about it is that it's going to have this initial slope isn't going to be as great because it's going to be slower. So, you know, you don't really know where it's going to cross in a sketch, but you do know it's going to cross. So I'm just going to do like this. And so that's the point where they meet. Okay, and that's an exaggerated view, but, but you get the idea. So that's your sketch. It doesn't matter about the numbers. Um, it doesn't matter where you put these as long as they cross. Okay. Okay. So what's next? The next part said, uh, you know, when do they meet and where do they meet? So here's what I have. This is the first ball. Ah, okay. I was doing that to, let's see, did I? Okay, that's fine. I was trying to block the reflection, but oh well. It's going to fall. Okay. Uh, here's the first position. I said it, x. It started at x equals 0 at time t equals 0, and start with this velocity, 0.3, uh, minus 1 half the acceleration. The minus really goes with the acceleration, but it doesn't matter. Uh, t squared. So that's just your basic kinematic equation for ball 1. Uh, so I have to rewrite that. All I did was multiply 1 half times 0.4. For ball 2, the difference is it started half a second later. So instead of t, I'd have a different time. But if I just subtract off half a second from that time, I get the original time. That, that's how it starts half a second later. I, I agree that was a little trickier than I wanted it to, to be, but still. And the same thing for the t over here. So it has the same acceleration, but it has uh, t minus half, 0.5 squared for that time. So now you just do exactly what you did before. You set those two x's equal to each other and find the time. So here I just, all I did was I multiplied this out to get that. And th this I have to multiply t minus 0.5 squared, and I get that. And then I multiply by the negative 0.2, and I get this. And then I set the two equal to each other. That's t x1, that's x2. The t squareds cancel because they have the same acceleration. And so I get something a little bit simpler. I solve for t, I get 0.86 seconds. And then where do they meet? I can either plug into the x1 equation or the x2. But either way, I plug in, to, here's x1, I plug in 0.86 seconds, I get 0.11 meters. That's it. So I, I was pretty, pretty generous on the credit for this one since I knew it was a little bit more difficult than I wanted it to be. Um, you know, if, you, if you're setting up equations like this and, and you, it's clear that you're knowing you need to solve that and you have a sketch, I mean, that's, that's, I'm, I think I gave you full credit, or at least Close. A lot of people put the sketches, they put constant straight lines. I mean, that's clearly not straight lines. They're not going to meet in that case. Okay, you're just making up stuff. Don't make up stuff. Okay, the next question um, was a little more straightforward, and it was straight from the lab. Uh, I gave you uh, mass and acceleration data. So I gave you, uh, for this case, Here's a car with weight over the end, and then you find the acceleration. Um, if you plot force versus mass, uh, the, the total, what did I plot? M2. No, I'm sorry. You're plotting 
force versus acceleration, where this force is m2 times g. So it's the mass, and then that times g is the force accelerating the whole thing, and then I plot it versus acceleration. You do get a straight line. Uh, you fit that straight line, and you should get a slope around 0.6 newtons per meters per second squared, because the force is in newtons, acceleration is in that. And one newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, kilogram meters per second squared, so this is just the same as uh, 0.65 kilograms. And since F equals MA, that's the total mass, if I plot F versus A, the mass would be the slope. So the total mass is 0.65 kilograms. That's all there was to that one. Can you even see what I'm writing here? I think you can. I'm going to assume that you can. Okay. Um, number three is a ball shot off of a table. I'm not going to go over the whole solution. Here's V0 theta. And here's uh, y0, and you want to find out where it lands x. So you have two uh, equations. You have the x equation, which says, let's call this uh, x equals 0, y equals 0 right there. So x final is x0, which is 0, uh, times the x velocity, v0 cosine theta, t. That's it. So I know theta, I know v0, I don't know t. But once I do, I can plug it in right here to get it. For the y equation, I have y equals uh, the final y equals y0 um, plus the y velocity, initial y velocity, v0 sine theta t minus 1 half gt squared. Now, in this case, I know it ends up at the ground, so this is 0. So now I, I know that number, I know that number, I know that number. That's a T. So I just have the quadratic, I can just use a quadratic equation to solve for time. And then I can get that time and plug it into here. And when you do that, you get X is about 1.9 meters. And that's it. Okay?